This is Evangelist Henry Walker. Thank you for tuning into our podcast. Or maybe you'll listen to me on my website at henrywalker.org under audio messages. Or maybe you're listening to me on my YouTube channel. I want to continue talking about the possibility of this being the last great harvest. And we want to start talking about our daddy, how we can present our daddy to so many people, how powerful he is, how majestic he is. But let's go to Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want. Let me say only what you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. Help people, Father, to open up their spirits and not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. And Satan, I rebuke you from this podcast, every succeeding podcast, and anybody listening out there, go right now and don't return in the name of Yeshua by the blood of Yeshua. Again, we want to talk about our daddy and how we can present our daddy, his power, his majesty to people as the Father uses us, but also how we can be stirred up as to how great he is and how powerful he is. As we minister to people in this possible last great harvest, and how the enemy is out there, but he cannot stop us. Because we abide in the secret place of the Most High. And how everything was created by the Father and for the Father, and by him all things consist, whether it be thrones, principalities, mice, or dominion. See, everything was created by him and for him. And as I mentioned on the last couple podcasts, Satan doesn't have an army against the Father's army. Satan works for the Father. The Father has everything under control. And there's so many people out there that need to know that. So let's present ourselves to the Father as a living sacrifice so he can use us to spread how great he is to so many people and how he's the answer to any problem they're facing or even will face. And we need to be reminded of that as we serve him. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 37. You got Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and then Isaiah. It's so important in these last days to draw closer to the Father, surrender everything to the Father. As I mentioned in every podcast, turn our flesh over to him so he can mortify the deeds of our flesh, make us more like Yeshua, and bring the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Sometimes the devil is looking for attention. He wants people to rebuke him, to bind him. But really, the only access he has to us is our flesh. There are times we have to bind him and rebuke him. But if we turn our flesh over to the Father, then the door is closed to Satan operating in our lives. And we abide in the secret place of the Most High. It's like sitting on his lap, as I mentioned in the last podcast. We should always consider ourselves to be like little boys, little girls, sitting on his lap, being comforted by him, protected by him, and being used by him. Isaiah 37. The Assyrians, under Sennacherib, in Isaiah 37, the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, and his army, has surrounded Judea. And Hezekiah, the king, is getting nervous. And he sent Eliakim and others to Isaiah the prophet. In verse 3, And they say unto him, Thus said Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy, for the children have come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. And they are scared and worried. In verse 6, And Isaiah said unto him, Thus shall you say to your master, King Hezekiah, thus said Yahweh, Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of, of Assyria have blasphemed me. See, the enemy is great for speaking loudly and trying to scare people, but he's got no power unless some people give him that power by not surrendering their flesh to the Father so he can mortify the deeds of their flesh. In verse 7, the father said, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. 
So we need to present this to people that maybe you feel like you're surrounded. Maybe you feel like the walls are, are caving in on you. Maybe there is no hope. But surrender everything to the Father. The Father never loses when somebody surrenders to Him. When He leads them into a battle, He always wins for them. So we need to tell people that He's got everything under control. The most important thing we can do, as I mentioned, is surrender everything to Him. Then our enemies become His enemies. In verse 10, one of the generals for the Assyrians came and started saying the same thing. That look at all these other nations that we conquered. Their gods couldn't help them. Don't listen to Hezekiah. See, when you want to minister to people, the devil may try to interfere with that. We talked about it on the last podcast in Acts 13. How does Elimas try to separate Paul from ministering to when important people on that island where he was? And the Father just blinded that Elimas for a season. So you have nothing to worry about. When the Father creates an encounter, nobody can close it. Look what happened with Peter and Cornelius. Father worked on Peter, worked on Cornelius, brought them together, and the whole family was saved. That we couldn't stop it. That was the door opening to the Gentiles. In verse 15, and Hezekiah prayed unto Yahweh, saying, O Yahweh of hosts, Elohim of Israel, that draws between the cherubims, thou art Elohim, even now alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. There's so many gods, little gods on the earth, but he is our Elohim. When you see God in the Old Testament, it's Elohim. And it's plurality of his attributes, how much power he has. And remember, in Genesis 1, he mentions that he's Elohim. So Elohim means he has all his power and majesty and his attributes. But that doesn't mean anything to us until we see Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh means not only do I have that power, I'm going to use that power to help my creation. And Yahweh is an action verb. When you surrender everything to him, he actively moves on your behalf. Yahweh is not a noun, it's an action verb. He goes into action. Even when we're sleeping, he's working for us. The devil has tried to rob that name of Yahweh over the centuries. That's his name. I am that I am. Whatever you need him to be, he will be. And we need to tell people that. I'm going to read his prayer again. Oh, Yahweh, your host, God. Elohim of Israel, that dwells between the cherubims, thou art the Elohim. Even now alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. He's got everything under control. We need to tell people about that, because there's so many things that are happening in the world. People are concerned. They look to some politicians. They can't help them. They look to some leaders in a ministry. They can't help them. They don't have the answers. Here's Yeshua with his arms wide open, saying, Come to me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Then he says in verse 18, Hezekiah says, Of a truth, Yahweh, the kings of Syria have laid waste all the nations in their countries. They have destroyed them. they say, saying, Yahweh, please save us from this. And this is the word that Yahweh gave back, and this is the word we need to tell people. This is the word which Yahweh has spoken concerning him. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed, and against whom hast thou exalted thy voice? speaking to the Assyrians, and lifted up their eyes on high, even against the mighty one of Israel. He's saying, these other cities, they had no power. Verse 27, therefore their inhabitants were a small power. They were dismayed and confounded. In verse 28, but I know your abode. This is Yahweh speaking to the Assyrians, especially the king, the son of cherub. I know that I abode, and I go in out, and I come in it, and I rage against me. I know everything you do, every step you take. I know. You never surprise me. See, nothing surprises the Father. And we need to tell people that. Nothing surprises him. Nothing surprises him. He's got everything under control. He knows. He's got everything and everybody under control. And these people who are not following him, they don't realize it, man. Everybody's going to stand before Yeshua. Everybody. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Yahweh. In verse 29, the father said, Because thy rage against me, and I told him this come up into my ears, therefore will I put my hook in thy nose, and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way you come. 
Verse 33, he tells his people, Therefore thus said Yahweh concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast it back against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return. He shall not come into the city, said Yahweh, for I will defend the city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. He's going to defend us. Present that to the people. How great our Father is. If you just surrender to Him, everything that He has is at His disposal to help us. Nothing holds Him back when we surrender everything to Him. He'll bless us. Maybe it's the timing issue when He wants to bless us, but He always blesses us. Paul said, In Him I both move and breathe and have my being. Again, we can't walk, talk, eat without him. We need him every nanosecond of the day. All the time we need him. But he's there for us. When you surrender to him, don't hold anything back or anybody back from the Father. Don't let anything or anybody come between you and your relationship with the Father. If there's anything that you've brought into your relationship with the Father that's not in the Word, you better get rid of it right away. In verse 36, after the father said this, he went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. And sent the cherub, he returned back like the father said he would, and his sons killed him. There's nothing coming against these people that the father leads us to or leads them to us that the father cannot overcome and give them victory as long as as they don't hold anything back from him, as long as they surrender everything to him. The surrendering to the Father is a sanctification process, which is the reason why his Spirit is inside of us, making us more like Yeshua. And every day, he wants to point out things in our lives that he wants to change. We just have to let him. And every day, he'll, he'll say, hey, I want you to surrender this to me, I want you to surrender that to me. Just obey him. It's so beautiful to be in his presence, abiding in the secret place with him. He says he hides us in his pavilion from the strife of tongues. It's so great. And salvation is so easy when you turn it over to the Father. When you surrender everything to him, he'll warn us if we're out of the way in any issue. It's so beautiful. And we need to present this to the people. To tell the people to surrender everything to the Father. Don't hold anything back. The things he asked people to give up, he's going to give so many things back to them from him. So many blessings. Then chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, said the Father. The Father is all about comforting us and taking care of us and ministering to us. We're his little children. There's no way that we could ever be lifted up in pride when you're close to him because it's a humbling experience to be in his presence and to know what Yeshua did for us and what he's prepared for us. But he is the Yahweh of all comfort. He is the comforter. Verse 2, speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of Yahweh's hand double for all her sins. Just tell people that, hey, sure, we all have sinned. Paul saying, when you surrender to me, I'll wipe out the memory of all those sins. I throw them into the sea of forgetfulness. And any war you're in will end when you surrender to me. We need to tell people that. We need to realize that too. When you surrender to the Father, then any war that we're in becomes his war. And he always wins. In verse 3, The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Yahweh. Make straight in the desert a highway for our Elohim. That was John the Baptist, but we too, we too have to prepare the way for him, coming back in the rapture, helping people, planting seeds. We may not harvest every soul, but we can plant the seeds. We may sow and other people will reap. We may reap where we never sowed. It's the harvest time. In verse 10, behold, Yahweh Elohim. See, again, when you see Yahweh Elohim, means not only do I have all this power as Elohim, but I want to work with my people and help my people. I want to use this power to help my creation. Behold, Yahweh, Elohim will come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, 
His reward is with him and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He takes care of us. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. He's so powerful but so gentle at the same time. Remember how the little children came to Yeshua and sat on his lap and in those days women and and children were second-class citizens, but they loved Yeshua. They signed Hosanna to him, which is a term that only can be applied to the Father. They knew who he was. He loved them. He still loves them. They knew that he loved them. I'm sure he made them laugh and just encouraged them, told them stories. So beautiful. In verse 12, Who had measured the waters in a hollow of his hand? And meet out heaven with the span, and it comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains and scales and hills in a balance. He took a drop of water and weighed all the water that he wanted on the earth to a drop of water. He took a piece of dust and weighed all the dirt that he wanted on the earth to a piece of dust. That's how powerful he is. We need to let people know that whatever is coming against him is no match for the Father when they surrender everything to him. Again, because then their enemies become his enemies. One time Joshua was surrounded by these enemies, five cities. And the father said, I'm going to fight for you. And the father had hail coming down on the enemy. And more were destroyed with the hail than Joshua and his army. He fights for you. And he never loses. When you surrender to him, he never loses. He fights until there's a victory for us. He fights until there's a victory for us. He may ask us to do something in that battle, but he he does the most. He wins for us. Things that we can't do, he does. Like Joshua couldn't bring hail down from the sky, but the Father did. Verse 13, who had directed the spirit of Yahweh, or being his counselor, had taught him? With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him, the way of understanding. Nobody. He's before everything. He's before all things. He had a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He knew Adam and Eve would fall to Satan, but he had a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. When Eve and Adam bowed down to Satan, the Father had created man right below him, above the angels, and Satan didn't want that. Satan wanted that position. They lost that position. But here comes Yeshua. Getting that position back for us. And the Father loves us. We're his creation. And he's the creator. And he can create things out of nothing. He created beauty out of nothing. Genesis 1. In the beginning. When he starts something, he finishes it. He's our finisher too. He that began a good work in us will complete it unto the day of Yeshua. Verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. And are counted as a small dust of the balance. Behold, they take it up the aisles as a very little thing. Nothing or nobody is too big for the Father. We need to present that to the people because the devil wants to paint a picture that he's so big and he's so powerful with his loud voice. But when people have power, they don't have to talk very loud. If there's a, a CEO of a company, he's having a board meeting and he's sitting at the head of the table. And he goes around the table and says, what do you think we should do about that plant over there? And somebody else gives an answer and says, what do you think we should do? And he goes around the table and he listens to everybody and what they say. And he said, in a, in a low voice, he doesn't have to shout, this is what we're going to do, starting the first day of the week. This is what we're going to do. If Satan had power, he wouldn't be talking so loud. But remember, when Elijah was running away from Jezebel, he's hiding in the cave. And then came a small, still voice, Yahweh. So what are you doing here? And he sent him right back to where Jezebel was. We talked about that on the last podcast, that he can reposition us where we need to be. Let him position you in these last days. He's going to tell you what to say. He said, don't worry about what to say. My father will speak through you. The father inside of us will speak through us. In verse 17, all nations before him, are as nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing and a vanity. So he said, you can't compare me to anything. What like is he going to compare me? He's talking about people take some wood out of the forest and make a graven image. Some of the wood they used to 
put the stove for, to cook their meals, and the, and the rest they make an image. It says they can't speak. They can't walk. They can't see. Verse 22. It is he, Yahweh, that sits upon the circle of the earth. So many people are talking about the flat earth. No. See, Columbus knew that the earth was round by, and, and this verse. It is he that sits upon the circle of the earth, Yahweh, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers in his sight, and stretch it out the heavens as a curtain, and spread them out as a tent to dwell in. That bring the princes to nothing. He make the judges of the earth as vanity. Those politicians that are supposed to be helping the people and aligning their own profits and making deals at the expense of the people that are supposed to be helping, he's going to bring them down. So many politicians start as wanting to help the people but didn't get involved with so many crooked things. Not, not all of them, but some of them. And the father just watches. And one day, man, what they're doing is cut short, it is over. And incidentally, the father's giving me a lot of knowledge about the numbers in the word. And the number 10 means that the father is cutting something or somebody off. Anytime you see a number in the word that's divisible by 10 or 10, it means he's cutting something or somebody off. Like when David came against Goliath. The father sent him with 10 cheeses and 10 loaves of bread. That means Goliath's cut off. Sometimes we do a teaching on the numbers. It's very powerful. In verse 28, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting Elohim, the Yahweh, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary, there's no certain of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Tell people, hey, if you feel weak and you're hurting, man, I know my daddy will touch you. Surrender to him, and he can touch you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. By his stripes, you are healed. Healing is the children's bread. The Father wants to use us to minister to these people and bring the sheep in to the rapture ship that's ready to pull out. It's so important. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly faint. Fall in verse 30. But they that wait upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Sure, we wait upon Yahweh for his perfect timing, but he's talking here about like a waiter working for Yahweh, helping people for Yahweh, allowing Yahweh to use us to help other people. Chapter 41, verse 9. Tell people, that he's taken them from the ends of the earth and called you from the chief people thereof. He wants to use them. doesn't matter what they're doing right now. Look at Gideon. Gideon was hiding out from the Midianites. He was threshing wheat where the grapes were. There wasn't a time for grapes. But the father used them. And with 300 men doing what the father said, the whole enemy army of 100,000 were destroyed. They killed each other. doesn't matter what our past is, where we were born, who our mother and father is or was, he's our daddy right now. We belong to him. I'm not saying we, we love our father and our mother, but the point is, where they failed, he never fails. But where we failed as fathers and mothers, he never fails. I'll read that beginning again. To whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto him, You are my servant. I've chosen thee and not cast thee away. That's for us. We want to serve him. Like Stephen waited on tables and served the, the older people at their mealtime. He talked in front of these religious leaders and baffled them so much that they got so upset and chewed on him and had him stoned. But the Father has chosen so many people out there. We need to let him know that it doesn't matter what you're doing now. And what you did in the past, he wants to use you like he called Matthew, the tax collector. Come follow me. He called Zacchaeus, hide up in the tree. He was a tax collector. Come follow me. Verse 10, fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your Elohim. I will strengthen you, tell them. And he's telling us, I will help you. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We think it's great how Aaron and her upheld Moses' arms in the battle. And as long as his arms were up, they won the battle. That's nothing compared to what the Father can do. He can strengthen us. And maybe we have no energy. He just gives us 
the energy and strengthens us, his anointing. Don't base on what he's asking you to do and how you feel. If you have pain in your body, do it in pain. If you have fear, do it in fear. The father asked Gideon to go down to the enemy's camp, and he said, you can take somebody with you. And he was going down there afraid, but when he came back, he heard the enemy was in fear. One guy said, I had a dream that a cake of barley came down and destroyed all the tents. It's nothing but the sword of Yahweh, even the sword of Gideon. One sword. Yahweh is behind that sword. And then Gideon changed from being fear. He went back and said, hey, we got the victory, let's go. And there was a fear transfer. The fear that the enemy was trying to put on Gideon successfully went to the enemy. And uh, you know the story. He had 300 men, three companies, and said, when I blow the trumpet and smash the light, you do the same thing and shout the sword of Yahweh, even the sword of Gideon. And they were so scared, they killed each other. It's a fear transfer. In these last days, the Father wants to put fear that the enemies put on you to certain people that are your enemies and put it on him. Satan is afraid. He's afraid of what you're going to do. He's afraid of this podcast. Some of the things I say in these podcasts are brand new to some people, but it's in the Word. Line upon line, precept upon precept. He doesn't want you to receive it. He doesn't want you to study it. But it's important. These are words from him. And this is the last harvest. He wants to use us. The biggest enemy that we have, as I say so often, is our flesh. The devil wants to say, hey, rebuke me, bind me. You know, he likes his attention. Again, sometimes we have to. But surrendering your flesh to the Father is like the end of the battle, so to speak. We're going to have some, maybe some testing, but when our flesh is in the Father's hands, the battle is over. Satan can't attack our flesh successfully because he's meeting the Father. We've already defeated him. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Passover, Yeshua made a show of principalities and powers openly by staying up there for us. And we need to stand on that word. We're going to be in the minority, but the minority are going to go to heaven. It's the majority they're going to go to hell. The road to hell is wide and many are found on it. The road to heaven is straight and narrow and few are found on it. This podcast always gives the praise and the honor to the Father and shows you how small the devil is, how little power he has when we surrender everything to the Father. doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. When we make mistakes, the Father just reminds us, shows us, we repent and says, let's go on. Just follow him. Read verse 11 again. Behold, all they that were incensed against you shall be ashamed and confounded. Because they're not fighting against you, they're fighting against the Father. They shall be as nothing. They, shall, they that strive with you shall perish. You're going to look for them and not find them. Even those that contend with you. They that war against you shall be as nothing as the thing of naught. For I am Yahweh your Elohim, and I will hold your right hand, saying unto you, Fear not, I will help you. We've been talking about how we need to tell people how great our daddy is, how powerful he is. Look where he took us from. He's no respect of persons. He can pull them out of wherever they are. Years ago, I heard the story about, I think his name was Chang, a minister in South Korea. He had, he had the largest assembly in the world at that time. And he was sleeping on a garbage heap. He had tuberculosis. And this woman came to him, prayed, he got healed. Again, he had the largest church in the world years ago, in South Korea. See, the Father can pull them out of wherever they are. It can pull you out of wherever you are. His arm is not shortened that he can't help you. Remember how we talked about, I want to give you some things that the devil doesn't want me to say to help you, because it's been helping me so much. If you get attacked by some thoughts, impure thoughts, worry, fear, anxiety, remember how Yeshua had that crown of thorns on his head. He did that for us. That means our minds are protected, and we need to remind the devil of that by picturing that in our spirits, but also quoting 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the Father, to pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yeshua and bringing into captivity every thought to the beings of Yeshua. It's like a tennis match. Give those thoughts to the Father. Don't deal with them. Don't dwell on them. And also we, we talked about at midnight. We talked about the different hours of the night. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., 9 to midnight, 12, 
midnight to 3 a.m., 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Remember, the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. The hours of the day are 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. The hours of the night are 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And that midnight to 3 a.m. is when the witches want to move. So pray for people. The Father wakes you up. Pray in advance. I have a sample prayer on my website at henrywalker.org about a prayer between 6 and 9 p.m. at the beginning of the day. Remember, the day runs from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., as I mentioned. Evening and morning were the first day in Genesis 1. It's important you get on his timing. And also, at midnight, as I mentioned, witchcraft wants to move. And it's like witchcraft is of the flesh. He wants to move on people at midnight on their flesh. It's important that be at home wherever possible before midnight and, and pray. Especially young people be out there and it's midnight and you want to get home early, but now say, I'm going to stay out a little bit longer. That's the enemy working on your flesh. Well, have another drink. Don't, have, don't drink at all. Uh, and well, you know, that guy is cute over there. That lady's pretty. And so he's, you wind up getting in your flesh, some people. It's important. Just know that at midnight, the enemy wants to move on people's flesh. And recognize that and take steps and pray. If you have to work at that time, take some time to pray. But pray for people between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. during that time who might be being subjected to a witchcraft attack. And again, on my website at henrywalker.org, there's about 300 messages on the messages right above the audio messages. I have two free books on the bottom of the message page, Noon, and Is the Trinity Really a Mystery? Explaining what the Trinity really is. And Noon talks about the feast days, the different hours of the day when the Father moves the most, and each month has special blessings. And messages like divorce and remarriage, the truth, wine is a mark of the truth, women in ministry, the truth. Where would assemblies be without some women in ministry? Incredible how so much opinions are in what some ministers say instead of from the Word. But also, as you may or may not know, this is a pro-life ministry. We believe that life begins at conception. The baby's heartbeat starts around 18 days. At about four months, the baby's heart is pumping 25 quarts of blood per day. It's a baby. It's a life. Not a tissue. It's a life. And those of you who had an abortion, repent. Ask the Father to give you and go on. Let's go to the Father in prayer right now. Put your hand on the computer, on the cell phone. So we want to pray for the babies right now in the womb. Father, touch the babies in the womb, Father. Bring them to the full birth. In the womb, Father, if they need healing, touch them in the womb, Father. If necessary, talk to their parents about allowing them to come to the full birth, Father. And we give you all the praise and the honor, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. So if you need prayer, just put your hand on a computer or on the cell phone. If you don't notice, you know that you're saved. Surrender everything to the Father and follow Him. And if you need a miracle out there, just believe with me right now. Any Gross, any tumors, any diseases that are represented out there, I curse you all. I command you all to die, growths, tumors, diseases. Die right now, disappear, and don't return in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Father, touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Make them every whit whole, Father. By your stripes they were healed. Healing is the children's bread. Receive your miracle right now. Believe for those growths and tumors to disappear. Diseases to disappear. Whatever is affecting your body in a negative way, it's going right now. Just believe it. In the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Any area of your life that you need a miracle, just receive it right now. Father, touch them in any area of their lives that they need a miracle, whether it be in their finances, whether it be in relationships. Touch them, Father, right now. And Father, help us all to, to serve you in this last great harvest. And lead us to people. Lead people to us, Father. We want to tell people how great you are, how good you are, how merciful you are, how everything about you is love. So here we are, Father, use us in a mighty way. And I'm claiming all this, Father, in your name, Father, the mighty name of Yeshua, by your blood, the blood of Yeshua. So remember the next time, this is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, greater is the Father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than he that is in the world.